for the Chinese, you see, this is our media. This is New People's Daily. This is a full statement, full text of the joint statement of, of between China and US after vis uh, issued after visit of President Obama. The statement, to my knowledge, it took several weeks to negotiate. It was finalized during talks between President uh, Hu Jintao and President Obama. So in this statement, they agreed a number of things on bilateral issues and multilateral issues, and also on global issues. I think they realized, two leaders realized that as the two great countries, although one is rich, one is poor, uh, they share a lot of common in addressing the, these, these issues. But first and foremost, they need to continue to improve the bilateral relationship and to enhance their cooperation. I think they, 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 President Obama's visit is very successful. They did a lot. I think he, he brought half of his cabinet to, to Beijing. Uh, and he, he very successful. we appreciate him and, uh, and congratulate him for his successful visit. I think our leaders will meet very, more often than before in the coming years. Thank you. Surely there's one thing we have very much in common, this planet. Uh, the climate is changing with some serious implications for all our peoples. Consensus of science is that human activity sure is not helping. Uh, China is doing some amazing things in that area, I, we hear. Our Congress is still debating this issue. Where do you see this going? How, how important is this as an issue? Is it possible to do something about this and preserve economic development? And where do you see China's role as a leader in, uh, in environmental issues? No, I think uh, it's a very good question. I think uh, because climate change, we take it, is a global issue. It's affect affecting all of us, affecting every human being. Uh, but global climate change is, if there should be any so-called unsuitable percent, percent, uh, uh, impacts, it dates back to the Industrial Revolution. So that's why I think uh, international community start to address climate change 20 years ago. So now there are two documents. First, the 1992 UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, and then another one, 1997, Kyoto Protocol. Now the state member states that start to negotiate the third document, legally binding document, but it would be a Copenhagen Agreement. But now with a, a few weeks, less than 20 days approaching to Copenhagen, uh, several countries start to talk that um, there might be possible it may not be possible to reach a legally binding comprehensive agreement. So they are starting to talk about something, kind of a framework agreement or uh, political agreement. But you know, addressing climate change, now I think is that for all countries to improve their consumption of energy to reduce emissions. But there should, the country should follow the so-called common path differentiated responsibilities. Because for developed countries, both historically and concurrently, they are the largest emitters, emitters of greenhouse gases. So they should do more and they should continue to take the lead in reducing emissions. But for developing countries, it's difficult, really difficult, to undertake similar quantified limitation and reduction targets as that of the developed countries. But they should do something within their capacity to reduce uh, their, their emissions. So it's really a that effect changing our lifestyle, a way of living. For example, I have a figure that for the US, 
per capita consumption of electricity is a very big number. It's 11,994 kilowatts per hour for the US per person. For the Chinese, per person only consumption of electricity are only 758 kilowatts per hour. You know the difference. This is the living standard. This is the living standard. That's where, 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 where I, I have, during my years, 10 years ago, in negotiating Kyoto Protocol, I met a number of US senators and congressmen. And I tried to convince them that the US really should take the lead. You need to take the lead. You are a rich country. You are the most industrialized country. And you are the largest emitter. You are capable. But it's unfortunate that the US Senate tried to have this linkage with Chinese, with Indians, with Brazilians. Actually, we want to do something, but we are not on the same level. That's a problem. That's why I think uh, for Copenhagen, uh, we hope that uh, developed countries, including US, will really undertake some commitments. Not immediate commitments, but at least they need to commit for certain targets to reduce the emissions. Secondly, that developed countries need to really, in a more open mind, to, to export technology. Because technology is a big issue for addressing climate change. I give you an example. That's a 10 or 15 years ago, in the mid-90s, China wants to buy kind of technology, so-called IGCC. It's a kind of technology for power generating of electricity by, by burning coal. But IGCC is more advanced, saving a lot of energy. Then US government said, okay, no, 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 that's, we're not ready to sell to, 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 sell to you, sell to you. After 10 years, China now has its own technology of IGCC. Then you are said, okay, you are, not, you, are, you are capable, you are eligible to buy these technologies. So this is a kind of cycle that I think that we need to have kind, kind of international mechanism that to, to provide with developing countries at of an affordable cost that to allow them to use the clean technologies. Because probably that I think that, I hope that they know, I, I talked with Dr. Green that there's no law school in your university because for university, law schools, for lawyers and businessmen, they always talk about the protection patent. That's why, for personally, I have advocating that in for the objective address, addressing climate change, the international community needs to set up a kind of international mechanism for the promotion of transfer of technology, of, of environmentally and climate friendly technology to developing countries to enable that all countries can use clean technology for the benefit of mitigating climate change. We're out of time. I apologize for the fact that the left-wing uh, socialists have asked more questions than the right-wing conservatives in this audience. Uh, but I would like to request the provost to propose a vote of thanks to Ambassador Liu. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for coming this evening. And uh, this has been such an informative discussion. I think that if Professor, or rather President Obama's trip to China has aided understanding between the countries, I think the presentations this evening have done the same. So Ambassador Liu and Ambassador Kamal, thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you.